Since this channel is all about electric cars, there's one type of electric car I've been wanting to talk about here on the channel for a while that I haven't featured in any of my videos or talked about on camera at all. And that is a hydrogen fuel cell powered electric vehicle. Yes, a hydrogen fuel cell powered car is an electric car. Instead of using, you know, a battery, it uses hydrogen gas, converts that to electricity and then propels the car forward. So in this video, I'm going to compare these two types of vehicles, well, on paper, on a few points, and they are actually much closer than you may think, but there's one huge issue or flaw about a hydrogen fuel cell powered car, which is the big reason I don't think it's the future at all. Before we start this comparison, I just have to say that currently there aren't many hydrogen fuel cell powered cars on sale. I think there are like three, maybe four different cars to choose from, and I don't think that will change anywhere in the near future. As for electric cars, there are dozens upon dozens of cars to choose from and there are so many new cars coming out this year, next year and in the next five to 10 years. So when it comes to choices, well, EVs win right out. But let's start with range. So with the best hydrogen fuel cell powered cars and the best EVs, the range is gonna be about the same. You're gonna get 650 kilometers or 400 range easily from the best electric cars or best hydrogen fuel cell powered cars. Then we have refueling time and here is where, you know, the hydrogen fuel cell power cars really went out because to fill up something like a Toyota Mirai, it's going to take five minutes. And even with the best, you know, and fastest electric cars today, you're still looking at 10 to 80% in about 18 to 20 minutes. So not even zero to 100%. The next one is infrastructure. And I mean, come on, this isn't even close. Anywhere in the world, I mean just about anywhere, there are so many more electric car chargers, DC fast chargers, lightning chargers, or AC home chargers than there are hydrogen fuel cell stations. I mean, it's not even close. Here in Norway, we have, I think, like three and a half thousand DC fast chargers and like four or five, you know, hydrogen fueling stations. It's not even close. Then we have the potential dangers, batteries versus hydrogen. And batteries have been well featured a lot in the media lately, the past few years, even the past 10 years. Phones catching fire, phones exploding on planes, phones catching fire and exploding next to people's heads on their nightstand while they are sleeping. EVs catching fire while people are charging them at home, at DC fast chargers, smoke bulging into flames and just engulfing, well, EVs and firefighting ha firefighters having to spend days to put out the fire. Yes, there has been a lot of scary imagery in the media, but there's also been done studies that shows that EVs do not catch fire more often than internal combustion engine cars. So this is a lot of, well, not propaganda, but it's a lot of sensationalism that goes after electric cars. But hydrogen, on the other hand, is a highly flammable and combustible and explosive gas. And it's not only like explosive like gasoline or diesel where gasoline has to be ignited with a spark. Diesel, you just well pressure it to a certain pressure and it combusts. Hydrogen will actually combust while being in contact with air. Remember the Hindenburg, or maybe you don't remember Hindenburg, which is this, which was this big blimp in the 1930s and 40s, which ripped a tear in, well, it's fuselage and it just, the whole thing just engulfed into flames. Hydrogen is a scary, scary gas that makes hydrogen stations explode. There was an explosion in the US that took out like 60 windows or 60 houses and their windows. Insane. Hydrogen is actually, actually dangerous. But then on the flip side, we have the efficiency of the fuel and hydrogen storage. So hydrogen is very, very energy dense. Actually, 33 kilowatt hours per kilo. That is correct, guys, 33 kilowatt hours per kilogram. So that means something like a Toyota Mirai, which can take five kilograms of hydrogen. That's equivalent to 163 kilowatt hours of energy. But then you're asking, why does it only have like 640 kilometers of range, which is the same as the Tesla Model S long range, would basically twice the energy? Well, that is because it takes a lot of energy to turn 
hydrogen into electricity. Only about 50% of that hydrogen is turned into electricity. So it doesn't matter that the Mirai can store twice as much energy, it also uses twice as much energy to propel the car the same distance. Okay, so all of that is well and good. And when you compare these two, well, technologies on paper, hydrogen fuel cell powered electric cars and battery powered electric cars on paper, it's kind of close. And you know, the hydrogen fuel cell powered electric cars have fast refilling times and also that energy storage or energy density uh, going for it. And it's not, you know, apparent which is better. But then we come to the huge, huge issue and the main reason why I don't think hydrogen fuel cell powered electric cars are going to, well, be the thing of the future to power all of our cars and mass transportation. Because it's really, 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 really inefficient to turn the electricity produced by the power plant into the hydrogen to propel that hydrogen fuel cell powered car forward. So when you have 100% energy made at the power plant, you often have to turn that into electricity that then turns the electricity into hydrogen that goes into the car because you have to make hydrogen. It's not abundant anywhere, you know, in its natural form anywhere on earth. In space though, it is, but not on earth. So you have to use that electricity to turn it into hydrogen and then pump it into the car. And then once it gets into the car, you're turning it back into electricity. So only about 25% of that energy that you made at the power plant is actually used to propel that car forward. So 25% efficiency is really, really poor. When you do that with an electric car, that electricity that is produced, you just have to transport that down the power lines. There is some loss and then you have to power, uh, uh, you know, uh, that goes on demand or into battery packs and then into the electric car. So you're going to lose some there, but the estimated efficiency is around 80 to 90% versus 25%, which is just mind boggling. And when you really, really think about what hydrogen really is in a hydrogen fuel cell powered car, it's just another way to store energy. It's just a battery, a different type of battery, but you have to turn electricity, into hydrogen and then back into electricity again and you're losing a lot of energy. Why don't just take that electricity, you know, move it downstream and then use the electricity, pump it into a battery and then use that to power the car forward. So and that's the big reason I don't think hydrogen fuel cell powered cars are the future because it's just super inefficient. Does it have a practical implication or application somewhere? Yeah, probably. But I think as batteries get better and better, electric motors, electric systems, electric cars get better and more efficient as we've seen in the past five years, 10 years, we've even seen it in the past year. I think it's gonna be harder and harder for people to justify hydrogen fuel cell power cars. So guys, I'm not an expert on this, but I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time. So let me know if I got anything wrong here or what you think in the comment section down below. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.